Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. Where in this module, we're going to be looking at the bubble chart. Now, the bubble chart is one that's really fun. It's a creative one that you can use to be able to show representative amounts of data in a bubble. You have different categories or portions of the data that you want to categorize. And then the size of the bubble is going to represent the amount of value that you have in each of the measures that you place in. You can have one, more than one measure, but you'll notice it gets a little funky whenever you start to add in more than one measure into your chart. You can see who this one was designed by right below there. Let's go ahead and download the visual and show you how to use it here next. All right, so once you go to the visual gallery, the Power BI custom visual gallery, which you can find by going to visuals.powerbi.com, you're going to scroll down until you find the bubble chart right here. So you'll select bubble and go ahead and download that visual. You can also download some of the samples that Microsoft has provided as well. So I'm going to download that visual and then I'm going to take that over to Power BI. All right, so I'm back in the Power BI desktop now. I'm going to start by bringing in my data. And in this case, our data set is going to have different music artists in it. And we're going to take a look at these different music artists and how they compare to each other in the bubble chart. So I'll start by going up to the Get Data section up in the top portion of the Power BI desktop. We're going to be pulling in from Excel in this one. So I'll select Excel. Once you select Excel, you're going to go search for inside the class files or the file that you have located at the bottom of this video. Then you can select the one here called Music Artist. That's the one that we'll use as our source here. I'll select it and hit Open. And that's going to connect us into the data set here. We're going to pull in the spreadsheet card called Artist Value. So I'll select Artist Value, click Load to pull that into our data model. And then we'll start to build out some visuals on top of it. Now, the first thing I'd like to do before we use the bubble chart is I want to show you uh, really what the data looks like in a table format. And then I'll actually uh, keep the table and we'll add the bubble and show you how you can do some cross filtering between the bubble chart and the table that we're going to add. So I'm going to start by bringing in first the artist name. You'll notice it automatically brings it into a table. I'll increase the size of that a bit here so we can see it a little better. There we go. And I'm going to take this and bring it over to the right hand side of the screen. And I will also increase this and make it take up about half the screen here. All right, so we've got that in here as a table. I'd also like to bring in something like the uh, country of origin of the group or band. Uh, I'll also bring in something like the period that they were active. So what time of, uh, what, what area or what time period were they active? Were they actively making music? I'll also bring in something like the uh, release year. So when did they actually release their last album? And or, uh, in this case, their first album. And then I'll select the value as well here so we can see how much money they're making for each. Uh, now the year that the items were, were released, you'll see here it's a number, the year is a number, and so it's actually aggregating up the year. You may want to turn off that aggregation. You can see here it has a little summarize icon or the sigma symbol next to the release year. You can turn off that by going up to the modeling ribbon and telling the default summarization on the year column, only the year column, to do not summarize. Okay, so just like that, you can see here if I were to uncheck that and check it back in here, that it will no longer try and summarize the uh, years for us. All right, so we've got those values in here now. So what I'd like to be able to do is I want to sort this table and see which of the artists have the higher value. And so if I click on the value here, I can tell it that I want to sort on value. And it looks like the highest value for an artist is coming from, go figure, the Beatles. So I have the Beatles, then I have uh, Elvis Presley, then Rihanna, more modern day uh, artists. I have Michael Jackson, Madonna, Elton John, and then comes in Taylor Swift. So we're able now to see a lot of these different data sets or different data points in here. And what I'd like to do is I'd also like to see by genre, which genres are the most popular. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select outside of the table, I'll click somewhere in the background over here. I'm now going to go import in the bubble chart that we downloaded a few moments ago. So I'll go to my visualizations pane and click to import from a file. And that's how we can import a custom visual. It'll prompt you here, of course, to confirm that you're OK importing a custom visual. I'll hit import. And I'll go find the custom visual called Superbubble, which I downloaded previously. So I can see one here called Superbubbles right here. And if I select Superbubbles and hit open, that's going to add it in here as a custom visual. So I can hit OK. And then if I select that new custom visual that appears inside my visualizations pane, you'll see I can make it take up about as much design surface as I'd like. On this case, I'll make it take up about half the screen here. And then I can place inside of that the different measures that I'd like to see. So if I want to measure here uh, which are the most popular genres, I can select genre here and also bring in the value, so how much value each of those are making. And I can see a bubble chart that gets created here where I can easily see which are the most popular genres. 
Just like with all the other visualizations, you can maximize this here. If you hit focus mode, you can see a better view of it. It really looks about the same here. If you hit back to report, it goes back to where it was a moment ago. Now, really, the key thing here is that there is some cross-filtering that's allowed. So if I select something like I want to see the top pop artist, I can click pop, and it'll show me the top pop artist here. It looks like Celine Dion is actually the top pop artist. Uh, you can click around here. I can select rock slash pop. You can select any of these here. Here's rock. The Eagles are the best rock band of all time, it looks like. So some interesting capabilities here with inside of the bubble to be able to filter down other items. Now, when it comes to being able to customize these values or customize the chart itself, there's not a whole lot you can do. Uh, you, you may remember already, if you want to customize a visual, you need to go over to the Format Paintbrush here on the right-hand side. And if you expand the Format Paintbrush, you'll see really all the items that you have here are pretty standard for every one of the custom visuals and, and, and even the standard visuals for that matter. I could expand the title section here and maybe put the title in the middle and increase the text size of the title so I can see value by genre is the name here. I could say instead of calling it value by genre, I could call it top genres. Okay, so it gives it a little bit of a, a better, more meaningful name to the chart. And then if I scroll down, again, that's something you have in every one of the visuals. You can add a background if you wanted to. I could turn on a background color to it. Right now it's set to white. Uh, you can also lock the aspect ratio, so that way as I start to resize this, it keeps the, the, the ratio of the size. Underneath general, you'll see the actual size and position of the visual. Uh, under border, you can add a border around it if you want to, so that's what a border looks like. It just puts a box around it, so nothing special there. And then the final one here is actually one that's relevant to this particular visual. The other ones all exist in other visual tools as well. Uh, the final one here called label, if you expand label, you'll see you can actually change the label color of what's on each of the bubbles. So right now it's set to white, but I could change it to something like blue if I prefer. So you can see you can change it around a bit. And that's really all the capabilities you have when it comes to customizing these. Uh, not a whole lot of other properties yet. I'd love to see some other stuff added to this one, but right now you can just simply change the text color that's on top of each of the bubbles. I did mention you can have more than one measure in here as well. So if I had kept another measure, let's say I had added in or kept this release year as a measure. Let me flip this back here and say we want to count all of these, for example. If I wanted to, I could drop the, this in the value section, and it's giving me now a count of each of these. And so you can have multiple measures in here if you wanted to. Uh, it just doesn't do a whole lot whenever you have both of those measures on top of each other. All right, so that's really it for the bubble chart. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It is a very interesting one. I love the cross-filtering I can do here now. I can select R and B. Uh, you can then select and see which uh, values show most often for those particular uh, artist. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. See you in the next one.